Hey, what's up everybody out there in learning land? Day 10 of 10 of our 10 day blues challenge. Congratulations for making it this far. Today we're gonna play a full blown solo over a 12 bar chord progression. Get both the printable PDF and the backing track to download links below. Additional links to see how you can win an Ortega ukulele. But if you came just cause you're ready to finish this 10 day challenge, that's cool with me, I dig it and I respect it. Why don't you go ahead and grab your ukulele. Blues, brain and attention span. Once you have those three things, follow me on in and it's time for us to get our not so random solo on. Come on in, let's do it. When you are learning a solo as opposed to composing a solo, um, the key is to break it down into phrases. And essentially a phrase is basically like we talked about with fills. So let's get the first four measures up. Typically when you're at a blues jam and you get a blues solo, it is gonna be divisible by 12 bars because that's a circle. So maybe your solo will be 12 bars, maybe it will be 24, maybe it will be 36. When you listen to your favorite blues solo on a record, try to think about how many times around are they going. Is the solo 12 bars? Is it 24, is it 36, is it 48? Is it Robert Johnson and is it 13? Because that dude didn't care at all. And then you start to break it down into chunks. A good place to start is the first four, board, four, four bars. So let's bring up the first four bars and you'll see written above, I have things saying phrase one, hot spot motif, phrase two, phrase three. We'll talk a little bit about that. But essentially, I like to break them down into phrases. Our first phrase is gonna sound like this. Okay, and then it's followed by that hot spot motif. And what I mean by a hot spot motif is, motif is something that's gonna repeat itself. You're gonna see that idea multiple times throughout the solo, but also by hot spot, I kinda just mean an empty spot. I'm filling up some space that isn't necessarily a long lick, it's just kinda some things filling it up. And that first lick is essentially going through the scale. One, and two, and three, and four. That's how you're counting it. And I'm playing the open, second, third fret of the C string, Open E, third fret, open A, third fret. One, and two, and three, and four. All right? And then that four, you're gonna hold that note for the first two beats of the next measure. So it's like four, one, two, three, and four. And that little ring finger, third fret, open A string, third fret, that's that hot spot motif. A nice little space filler, something that um, we'll see multiple times, but it gives that dead space a little energy. So the first phrase and the hot spot motif, one and two and three and four, one, two, three and four. Then we get to our second phrase, and you notice the second phrase is the exact same, except we're going to play this third fret here, also on the first beat. So we get one and two and three and four, one. That little extra note is the only difference. Creating repetition in your solo can make a solo much more um, rememberable and can make it feel more vocal and more melodic. All right? And then we get into the um, next phrase and notice that the next phrase doesn't start on the one beat. It's very common to have licks, fills, and solos start before the next bar and do something called anticipating the change. By starting phase, uh, our third phrase here, third fret, open, third fret, three, we're anticipating the change. So phase, phrase three, and the first note's gonna be that fifth fret up there. But we'll look at that in a second. So let's play the first four bars. Two, three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one. All right, let's bring up the next. So what we have here is something called call and response. And we're gonna see a similar phrase kind of repeating itself. We get to that fifth fret and we let it ring for one, two, a rest on the third beat, three, and four and five. So we're working our way back to this fifth fret. This is a D note. Oops. 
So we're hitting this D note over the D7 in the progression. So this part of the phrase is sticking to the D and sticking to the harmony. So we get two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one. Phrase four is the same as three, but the only difference is we're gonna play the open A string because we're going from our D7 to our A7 chord. So we get one and two, I'm sorry, and four and one, two, three, four. And then we got a little hot spot motif um, to fill up that bar right there. One, two, three, and four. Notice how it's the same as our other hot spot motif. It's familiar, the ear likes that. So these four bars are going to be one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. All right? And then we're in our last four bars. So this is how, when you're breaking down your blues solos, put them into these four pieces, or these chunks of four bars, break them down piece by piece, and then stack them together. And make sure you're counting the rhythm out loud because you're gonna wanna stay in time. All right, the last four measures. So similar to day nine, in this part, we want to emphasize the E note over our E7 and the D note over our D7. So the first uh, lick over the E is gonna go one, two, triple of one. Open E string for the first two beats. One, two, ring finger, third fret, and you're gonna go triple of three, open A, three, and then open E. One, two, three, pull of four. Middle finger down to the second fret. One, two, three, pull of four. And this time triplets again, but each time, this one we're gonna play on each on a string, so it's pretty easy. You're gonna go one, two, three, pull of four. And get that third fret right there. Now I'm thinking about this D7 shape when I'm choosing notes from the blues scale to match. Those two, E7 and D7. One, two, three, pull of four. One, two, three, pull of four. One. Open A, and then we're doing a new turnaround. I know it seems a little cruel to do a new turnaround when we're trying to put this all into a solo, but it should feel similar. You're gonna get your middle finger on the fourth fret, and we're doing triplet timing, but your pointer finger is gonna be the third fret here on the E string. And you're gonna go triple it, thumb on the C string, index on the E, middle on the A. Tripola, tripola, tripola. Open E string, hammer on first, open A, and then you're gonna play the E string two on the third beat, the full E7. So just the turnaround, one, two, pola, three, pola, four, pola, one, pola, two, three, four. Those last four measures, one, two, three, four, pola. Uh. The last four measures, one, two, triple, four, one, two, Tripola four. One, tripola, 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 two, three, four, boom. And that's the end of your 12 bar solo. So before we do it to a backing track, let's go ahead and just um, play through the whole 12 bar and I'm gonna count it out nice and slow and I'll count us in. Okay, one, two, three, Four, one and two and three and four. One, two, three and four. One and two and three and four. One, two, three and four and one. Two, three and four and one. Two, three 
and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three and four, one, two, triple of four, one, two, triple of four, one, triple a triple a triple a triple a two, three. I'm sorry, that was four. I messed up the counting on the triplet at the little bit because I should have gone two, three, four. So I messed up the counting a little bit, but that's how you play it. Break those down into pieces, learn each phrase, learn each four bar section, and now we're gonna try to put it to our backing track. job everybody for making it through these whole 10 days super proud of you thank you so much I appreciate you it's been a fun experiment and I'm gonna do more of these challenges make sure to check out that Facebook group because I'm not gonna do all of these challenges on YouTube some of them are gonna be only on Instagram for example like I think my next challenge is gonna be a seven day challenge one week a blues lick every day so in one week you'll have seven tasty blue slicks, for example. Little things like that. So make sure to follow me on Instagram. Think about becoming a Patreon. You get tabs like this for all of our lessons, previous and future lessons, backing tracks if you're a $5 um, reward, and some other goodies in there as well. All right, 10 Thumbs Productions. Check out 10thumbspro.com. Skype Lessons 101 if you are interested. Email me, 10thumbsproductions at gmail.com. And thank you so much again for participating in this challenge. We will be announcing the winner of the ukulele at the end of the month. Take care of yourselves and have a lovely day, everybody. You did great. Be so proud, pat yourself on the back. Life is good, you can shred a fat blue solo. Life is good, life is good. Well, life is good, life is good. Life is good.